Hello, guys, and welcome to Smart Women Read Romance, a book review podcast where we fangirl over all things romance. I'm Juliet. And I'm Jessen. And today we'll be reviewing The Bride Test, the second book in Helen Huang's Kiss Quotient series. But before we dive in, please go and subscribe to the podcast on your preferred podcast platform and please rate and review us. We really, really appreciate it. Jessen and I love getting feedback from our listeners, so please follow us on our social media pages at SWReadROM. And if you're looking for some extras, join our Patreon for access to exclusive giveaways, a look behind the scenes of our episodes, and some funny Q&A videos that we like to play. Special shout out to our patrons. We completely and totally adore you guys and appreciate your support. Okay. So what's been going on with you, Jess? So I was telling Juliet about this um, new magazine subscription that I um, signed up for. It's called Blush Magazine. It's a digital, it's a digital magazine. All you have to do is sign up for it. It's free. It's like a newsletter or whatever. Um, But (laughs) they have some really cool sections in it. One of my favorite ones is the notable book dedications (laughs) one. Did you read that section of it? Oh my god, I loved it. I I really loved. I think actually, I think I screenshot it. Hang on. Oh, you did? Yes, I've got to pull up some of my favorites. I was because when I was sending them to. I was messaging them to you. you remember? Oh, yeah, yeah. It was so funny. Okay, wait. Hang on. Hang on. Okay, y'all. Listen to this. <laughs> so these are notable dedications they just post. This one is from Dumplin' by Julie, Julie Murphy for all the fat bottom girls. Yeah. I love that one. But this one, I don't know why. I just kept laughing and I could not stop. It's called My Shit Life So Far by Frankie Boyle. And the dedication is, to all my enemies, I will destroy you. <laughs> I, I really love book dedications. Yes. So I really do enjoy reading that section yes. of it. I, I yeah. Makes I me like think the I gotta get more ones. creative with mine. Yeah, I like all the funny ones. <laughs> yeah. But they also have a good section it's called lust haves, like must haves. What a so what a pl- cute. cool play on words. I know. But I it's love basically play on just words. A, a ton of like sussy things stuff that I don't need but I really yes. want because it's like book related like yeah. coffee cups and stuff and yes. I'm just like of course I need this <laughs> I know yes I definitely need this <laughs> I really I mean I have to it's, have it's, it <laughs> that section is not really good for my bank account but whatever yeah, right and then of course they have some really cool author interviews on there they have one with uh Beverly Jenkins and oh, Kylie yes. Scott we reviewed yes. uh Kylie Scott I do want to uh do a Beverly Jenkins novel I know that she had a new one a new book come out recently that I'm very interested in reading but um yeah I just like this I just like this magazine and it's digital too so it's, it's like, really beautiful it's I, laid out so beautifully yeah it is I like it I like it. So I just wanted to like let y'all know about that. Definitely. Yeah. Just go look up Blush Magazine. And also yeah. their Instagram is pretty funny because I always I try not to like stalk them too much, but I always want to <laughs> regram their this yes. stuff that try they post. Yeah, mm-hmm. exactly. So anyway, <laughs> I'm just so excited to be recording this episode. I know. Because uh, I'm in love with Helen Huang's writing style. Me too. And we did get some like the, the news, the casting news today mm-hmm. for um, The Hating Game. Yes. And I know that I know that the Kiss Quotient's also being made into a movie but I just thought it's so interesting because I was on a couple other Facebook groups um today and there was like mixed reviews which Mm -hmm. I think that that's a very normal response whenever books are made into movies or adapted into movies it's just I don't think that anybody could really live up to what you imagine in Mm -hmm. your head you Mm -hmm. know what I'm saying and I think that you know coming close as long as I feel like the actors have chemistry. I'm pretty happy with it right. in and general. It, and to me, if they just stay true to the story, they don't have to look exactly like the person in my head because that's mm-hmm. kind of impossible. It is. You it's know? so impossible. Um, but I really love the guy they got for Josh Templeman. Yeah. He's, He's a hottie. Cool. I haven't seen him. His name's like Robbie Amell or something. Yeah, I've not seen him in anything And either. I haven't really seen him in anything. I know that he's the cousin of the guy who plays in Arrow, which is like a really right. popular oh, series. Oh, gosh. And that dude um, is. But I did go watch like after I saw the casting news mm-hmm. that Lucy Hale and Robbie Amell were going to be in it, I was like, who, who is he? And I just wanted to see him like speak. Yes. Yes. So I saw an interview with him and his wife. And if he looks at Lucy Hale, who's going to be playing Lucy from um, the hating game, right. it, Lucy remotely closely to how he looks at his wife, I think we'll be very happy wow. because That's... he just like was such an adoring husband. I'm Aww. like, okay, if you can do that to do in that. the show, like definitely, I will. I will. I will, act that I will be on board. I will be on board. <laughs> That's awesome. Lucy Hale. It wasn't really a surprise because that was actually in Sally Thorne's flamethrower group. That was mm-hmm. actually they one were talking of the about names that. that were thrown out a lot. Mm-hmm. Personally, I really liked the look of um, Zoe 
Deutsch, which she's so cute. She actually played in Wait, that, what the adaptation in? for um, the Vampire Academy. She actually played oh, Rose, yeah. which oh, I didn't yeah. like her as Rose because yeah, yeah, yeah. she's so petite. Yes. She's too skinny. She was kind of, yes. Yeah. But anyway, I thought that she would have been a good Lucy, but mm-hmm. I'm, I'm fine with Lucy Hale. Yeah. But um, I'm just, I'm actually really a lot more nervous to see who they <laughs> cast in the Kiss Quotient because it's like, who's going to be able to pull off who Stella? Who's going to be Stella? That like, has got to be. Have, you have to, oh, And God. not to say I'm, that, uh, you know, it's just, you're, it's going to take an, an incredible actress to pull her off I think that off it's going to be such subtlety trying mm-hmm. to act. Mm-hmm out Stella without having the advantage without of being in her point voice. of view. Exactly. exactly. <laughs> so it's just, I mean, I'm, I'm, but uh, I did read an interview where uh, Helen Huang did do her like potent, like list of like, mm-hmm. not just a dream cast, but she, she threw out multiple actors per um, oh, person. Really? And I mean, like there's so many and I, I, I just love well, it. Well, you and I'll be going on a double date anyway. Yeah, well, I'll say exactly. double date, like you and me. Exactly. <laughs> We'll be oh going. my goodness! I, there's another <laughs> casting call for like Bridgertons, and oh, who's going to play them? There's oh, so many the books being adapted. Oh, it's like goodness. sometimes I feel happy about all these books being adapted, and then sometimes I don't because someone in the uh, one of our Facebook groups said like, "Man, all these ba- bandwagoners coming in after the movie, <laughs> and we we found it before. We loved them first. Get back. We're the true fans. <laughs> we are no, the true seriously. fans. Seriously, of course we love Y'all are posers. new people discovering the yeah. books that we love. Yeah. That's why we made exactly. this podcast to yeah. kind of try to broadcast it to other people. Yes, we're going to share like, our love. Yeah. That's so right. if, if they come through movies, it's fine. Yeah. <laughs> we welcome you. <laughs> we welcome you moviegoers. We will allow you to read the books after you we watch the movie. We will convert you to book reading in no time. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. All it's right, going to be so fun. Let's um, hear about what you've been up okay, to. Okay. So I just want to share a funny story. So, you know, reading the, the book, uh, The Bride Test, I wasn't quite sure how to pronounce her name, which is M Y her with, her Vietnamese name, yeah, like, Esme's mm-hmm. Vietnamese name, mm-hmm. which with the M Y and that curly accent mm-hmm. on top. I don't know the right pronunciation of that, and I should. I know I'm an English teacher, whatever. But anyway, so I thought, well, okay, I need to figure is out it how still to still called. I'm sorry, is it still called a tilde? Because I know it's a tilde in Spanish. The well, that's accent. what I was thinking. I was thinking it shouldn't be called that if it's not. Spanish. I know. I was like, it must have a different. <laughs> Oh, uh, I know. So word. It anyway, a different name, right? but it, it looks like a tilde it on does. top of the Y. Exactly. So I started thinking, and I was like, oh, hello. I've had many um, Vietnamese American students. And one of them is Kathy Nguyen, one of my amazing, smart, beautiful, wonderful former students. Yes, <laughs> Kathy, I'm talking to you. <laughs> and I was like, hey, let me just call her up. Okay, so, Why so not? Hey. I texted her and I'm like, hey, um, I need the pronunciation of a Vietnamese name so I, I don't sound like an idiot on the podcast. And um, I thought you could help me out. I was like, are you busy? She's like, first of all, how are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> and she's like, I'm in Walmart, call me. So <laughs> so I called her and we had the best conversation. So much fun catching up. And she did help me pronounce. And she said it is May, <laughs> which she needed to call her mom to get uh, actual pronunciation. Because the first time she said it was my, she mm-hmm. said it's an uneasy sound. And I was, I don't know what that means. You know, she said, we talked about the intonations and yeah. how there's up and down. Yeah, it it's so tonal. The, right. It's very tonal. But this name is actually May, and um, her mom helped me out. So thank yeah. you, Kathy's mom. Again. I also went in the rabbit hole of um, videos of pronunciations. Yeah. yeah, well, I tried to look it up online, and nothing was helping me. Well, and I never, so I, like, I couldn't I to find to the exact word, but I just got in the rabbit hole of common Vietnamese mm-hmm. names, and I was so fascinated by the intricate vowel sounds yeah. that I mean the diphthongs it's like hard to get you know whenever you're so used to your tongue moving a certain way and like right. in your mouth you moving a certain way to try to get it to move that other way to get that sound it's yes. like so hard it's very difficult but, oh it's very my goodness difficult. I, just I used like, to try to get them and I had a lot of um we have a large Laotian population mm-hmm. locally and have a lot of um Laotian American students and when they would try to give me to pronounce things I'm like y'all this is so hard for my American tongue like I cannot yeah. even but um, anyway, so I just want to thank Helen Huang because she reconnected me with my lovely student, Kathy Wynn, and we're having lunch this girl. summer. And I'm so happy <laughs> to be talking to Kathy again. So anyway. That is so awesome. I love that. I know. Helen Huang bringing <laughs> friends together. <laughs> That's right. So <laughs> thanks again, Kathy. You're the best. Um, all, right. all right. Let's get into our book. 
All right. Helen Huang's follow-up to her debut novel, The Kiss Quotient, does not disappoint. The Bride Test is a dual POV twist on a marriage of convenience trope with a diverse cast of characters. Huang deftly weaves the romantic elements with social commentary on autism from the male perspective, as well as the grit and determination required of a person immigrating to the U.S. A mix of humor, heartache, and incredibly steamy scenes will keep you racing toward the finish line and then lamenting that it's over too soon. It really was over yes. too soon. I was like, no. I know. How long until Quan's book? I raced through. Oh, Quan. <laughs> I don't even. Okay, we'll get there. <laughs> I know, I know. Um, so how did you? How did you feel about the second book, just okay. in general? First of all, can I just say congratulations to Helen Huang on listing on the USA Today yes, bestsellers list? That's congratulations. amazing. Congratulations! Like so proud, so it, well deserved. Amazing. Yes. I love you. You deserve all the things. Mm-hmm. But um, so this was me reading for the first time the day that it came out. I was like, I'm gonna be a good podcaster and I'm going to do my highlights now. So I was (laughs) highlighting. I was like, this is a good quote. Ooh, I need to remember this scene. Right. And then I was only about 25% in whenever I abandoned that because I was like, time to speed read. I'm like, nope, nope. I just need to know what happens next. No time to highlight. (laughs) I'm like, I am so into this book. I'm like, screw Mm -hmm. highlighting. I was like, I need, I need to read. Yes. You have to to read read and then reread for the note taking. I did. I did. (laughs) I had to go. I was just like, I was trying to be like a responsible person who you know yeah I procrastinate no what (laughs) no um no so that didn't happen because it sucked me in like I I think I was a little bit surprised though too because I was expecting like I love Stella Mm -hmm. so much oh me too she was so endearing from the Mm get-go and I was expecting like Kai to be a harder nut to crack and I don't know why I guess just perception of like male in general like the emotions but like he was something that was unexpected and I felt like there was so much emotion that Kai has of course he thinks he has none I know but but his point of view was wow thrilling it was great it was amazing I think that Helen Huang amped up the humor in this novel too because Mm -hmm. I was dying oh my gosh oh my gosh there were so Dying. many there's like, I know and that's actually her situational humor was <laughs> insane and even I, some of the insane. things that Kai thinks oh my god just, it was great it was they like, were not meant to be funny but they were hilarious like one of his phrases that it's he like, repeats throughout is mind over penis and yes. I died every time I read it it was just great <laughs> trying to coach oh my himself goodness. well we fell in love hard we did so how do you think it compares to the kiss quotient. Not saying you have to like rank one, but just like. Right. Okay. So my comparison is how I felt when I read Sally Thorne's 99% mine. Mm-hmm. It's like it was different, but equally as good to right. me in quality and just a level of craft it's like and you writing felt and storytelling. You didn't have the same story recycled. No, not at all. So this one felt totally, totally different. Absolutely. But at the same time, I was hooked and riveted and completely immersed in the characters and their story and their their love story. I loved it. It was absolutely beautiful. Yeah. I did want to touch on this because I love reading Helen Huang's author notes at the end of the book. Like she has some of the best. Um, but oh she my was gosh. talking about her original plan for Kai and Esme that yes. Esme was going to be like the other woman that mm-hmm. he doesn't end up with, just like someone that he helps out, someone right. that his mom wants him to marry, mm-hmm. but that he's in love with somebody else. But she was saying that, you know, it just didn't feel right. And Esme just kept calling to her. And I'm so glad that she did. Is because that beautiful? Or Esme what? was I just wanted to hug her so much because she was amazing. She was I, adorable. I loved her. Absolutely. Oh, and then also just like all the um all the conversations that she was able to have with her mom mm-hmm. about her experience to um immigrating. That was just lovely. I loved yeah. hearing about that. It, and I just love that she listened to her muse and her characters, mm-hmm. you know, Sometimes and followed it's a that. character driven story and the character yeah. voices are too loud to ignore. Mm-hmm. Penny Reed actually just said something about Billy and Claire's she did. book the other I, day. I read that. And I was like, stop it. <laughs> I read it and I saw your comment and I commented also. <laughs> yeah, we're all y'all. We are desperately, desperately waiting for Billy and Claire's story. Yes. But we know that we're going to need lots of tissues. But I feel like those stories just have such an emotional depth whenever the characters are just so loud. They have power. Yeah, it's a lot of power. Mm-hmm. And I, this book just, ugh, ugh, ugh. Okay, anyway, let's talk about the characters <laughs> so that we can get into this breakdown. <laughs> so we have Kai, who's Michael's cousin and the younger brother of Quan. Kai suffers from something terribly inconvenient. 
a mother who thinks she knows what's best for her children. (laughs) Diagnosed with autism at a young age, Kai processes things differently. In fact, he believes, as he was once told, that his heart is made of stone. Grief and love are the flip sides of the same coin. Emotions that Kai is convinced he cannot feel. You are wrong, Kai, my little sweet baby (laughs) angel child. (laughs) Then we have Esme, a struggling single mother in Vietnam who crosses paths with Kai's well-meaning mother in Ho Chi Minh. She's offered the opportunity to travel to America for a chance at winning over Kai, who his mother thinks needs a woman more stubborn than him to recognize the family-shaped puzzle piece missing from his life. She'd be crazy not to take this chance for her own family. Mm-hmm. And I just love it. And yes. I want to hug it. And we're going to go to the <laughs> we breakdown. We want to hug them all. <laughs> we're going to go into the spoiler section, guys, yeah, because there's we can't wait. so much to talk yes. about. I was just like, so much happens in this book. It's wow. It's amazing. Okay. Please go read this book and then come back and come chat with us in the spoiler section. Okay, so now we're in the spoiler section, guys, and you know what it is. Showdown time. Showdown time. I get to go first. Let's hear it, Jess. <laughs> okay, so my showdown scene is actually, it's like the first morning that met Esme's there. And <laughs> so a, a little favorites. bit of background <laughs> is that whenever Esme and Kai get to his house, because Esme is staying at Kai's mm-hmm. house, courtesy of Kai's mother, <laughs> um, <laughs> she's like, your yard is like really overgrown. Yeah, this is like horrendous. <laughs> Kai has ha, has a method to his madness. Apparently, he will do anything for people who ask him nicely. But yes. his neighbor was coming on a little too strong, saying you need to clean up stuff. It and so now mean. he needs to prove a point. <laughs> he needs to let his yard grow. Yeah. Well, Esme's just trying to be helpful around mm-hmm. the house. You know, she's like rearranging things. Well, he wakes up in the morning. After the whole shower debacle where, you know, wetness and towels dripping, <laughs> he just needs to get away. So he needs to go work out, do his routine. So right. he's working out and he's counting. And then he sees Esme outside with a meat cleaver chopping <laughs> down trees <laughs> and vines and just all the jungle that's outside. And oh, she's like in hammer one. pants and a loose mm-hmm. shirt with no bra on. And yeah. he's like, oh, my God. He talks about what those hammer doing? pants quite yes, a bit. Yes, he's like, are those hammer pants? And then he's <laughs> like, oh, my God. She's bending over. It's like Beyonce. <laughs> like, he's dying. He's suffering. And the funniest part is that she incorporates this really well. So Kai is, you know, he's keeping track of his mm-hmm. pull-ups, whatever he's doing. One, two, three. Esme does something, distracts him, and he has to start over. One, yeah. two, three. And then he's just like, he can't. And this is his line where he says, mind over penis mind over penis because he's <laughs> so attracted to Esme oh, yeah. and she's so distracting he is not prepared for the effect that Esme has on him and it's just the most funny scene because it really highlights their characters he really thinks he's just not going to be he, he's just going to ignore this person that right. his mom's shoving I'm going to do what my mom said for the month or, or till August whenever yes. she in sh- will ship her home and yeah it's done I'll go back to my life right exactly yeah. no Esme has such an effect on him right off the bat and this is Esme's just trying to make everything lovely know. and she's and so cute helpful. and her little hair her little ponytail mm-hmm. swinging exactly. and she's, she's out just there like, just I can do this and I'm going to make this pretty <laughs> and it's amazing and I'm just like oh. I love her that that is a great scene. I just it still I sticks in like my mind how cute she is. I felt like got the ball rolling really fast. Mm-hmm. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, it we, definitely we, did. We didn't tiptoe around this. We went straight in. <laughs> we dove in. She was adorable. Okay, so my showdown scene, and you're probably going to laugh at this, is um, is actually not one with them together. I thought I, there are tons that I love, but one that keeps sticking out and I was literally crying laughing oh, no. is, is okay so it's after they first had sex mm-hmm. oh my god this is the best scene <laughs> oh and Esme is so good. Esme is furious and he doesn't know why so he goes to his brother Quan's house <laughs> I'm dying and Just- he doesn't understand what has gone awry so Kai has had amazing mind-blowing sex with Esme yeah 
He, he had like, an amazing, amazing he orgasm. He was like, top-notch, guys. It was amazing. But for some reason, the next day, she's very upset. She's so, like ignoring him. Yeah, she's ignoring him, very angry. And, and she he, slept in the other room. Yeah, like, she slept in the like, other room. He's like, on? what happened? Does this, is this what women normally do? I thought they wanted cuddling. Mm-hmm. Okay, um, so Kai just had sex with her. He came and then got off the bed and went to the, and took a shower. Okay, so he doesn't and, understand and that. And she didn't have an orgasm. She did not have an orgasm. And she's feeling like, oh, he's going to wash himself off me. So it was like big no-no. So he goes to his brother, Quan and tells his brother what happened after they call Michael. So they've got this like three-way conversation going. Yeah, he's like, oh shit, I wish Michael was here. Let's he's call like, him. Let's call Michael. Michael knows everything, you know, about girls. And so as soon as they tell him, Kai still doesn't know what he's done wrong. They're like, oh shit. I love oh, whenever, I love whenever God. they're like, did she orgasm? Did she orgasm? He's like, well, what do you mean? Yeah. yeah. Like, well, how do you know she orgasmed? What do you mean how do I know? She, she made those sounds. She made those the sounds. noises. She made those, those, those like, you know, <laughs> noises. like, did you did you touch her clitoris? And he's he like, said, "What's a what's clitoris?" A clitoris? <laughs> <laughs> it is the best conversation. So then Quan's like, "Oh no, oh hell no!" Michael's like, "I gotta go. I can't even deal with this." So Quan goes gets a stack of books. One is "Sex for Dummies." It's great. It is hilarious. It is the. It is but the, I like that Quan has it though. Yeah, he's like <laughs> he's like, look, I'm gonna learn. He's yeah. like, I'm not shame. Hey, it is not shameful. <sighs> not it is at not all. shameful to learn. Look, sometimes. Knowing is better than I can can tell you. I cannot wait for Quan's book. I'm dying already. He is the man. So it was just the cutest bro brotherly moment. moment. It was. I love Quan and Kai's relationship, but I I also like the fact that Kai was just like, "What did I do wrong? Let me fix it. Tell me. I want to fix it. I, I." I like her. He doesn't mm-hmm. say care for her or anything, yeah. but we know he likes her. Yeah. And he wants to make things right. So, it was. Yeah. I, that was so also. So he's got to find the clitoris. My backup scene. I love how he also <laughs> says it sounds like it's like an urban legend, like yeah, a chupacabra. chupacabra. <laughs> clitoris isn't real. I can't. It's like an urban legend. It's great. It, it's you know not what? Kai. <laughs> the boys have such great advice for Kai, though. It's yeah, a, they it's do. Amazing. It's so. just a sweet scene. Like, Quan is actually kind of gentle at the same time, like, bruh. Let me help yeah, you. <laughs> like, oh no. You need to you need to go do some reading. And then he does. So he does. Yeah, but let's get into it. Let's get yes, into the let's breakdown. Let's get into the breakdown. Okay. So the opening scene is Kai at his best friend and cousin Andy's funeral. Very mm-hmm. somber note to open on, but yeah. it does prove a point. So Kai internally observes that if this were a Vietnamese soap opera soap opera his tears would be forming rivers and drowning everyone like Mm -hmm. very dramatic everyone's very very sad and he's like well why is my mind clear why why am i thinking about my homework assignment and what's Mm -hmm. due tomorrow and why is he still functioning whenever everybody else is falling apart right like this was his best friend his only friend that died yes you know um, he's also uncomfortable by the noise of the Buddhist chants and he's imagining what he and Andy would actually do to escape this room if he mm-hmm. were still here. Like, it's almost like he's just like, it's not actually sunk it's in exactly. for him as well. Mm-hmm. And it's just like, he cannot help but just be like, well, if he were here, this is what would happen. Right. It's like not come to terms that, well, he is not here though. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So... His aunt, who is Andy's mom, asks, I thought you two were close. Don't you care that he's gone? And that <sighs> line really broke my heart. It did. Me too. Really, really, really broke my heart. Yeah. And, and like his mom was like, of course he cares. Of like, course of course they were close. Yeah. So in elementary school, a psychologist diagnosed uh, Kai, but the majority of his family kind of tends to discount it just because it really doesn't adversely affect his behavior or his schoolwork. Like it right. hasn't actually adversely affected him at all and it only comes out in these social situations right. and though though he does have um some touch aversion it's not as prominent as stella's was i have to say agree it's completely different which mm-hmm. like we said whenever you meet one person with autism you met one person, one with, person autism. with autism it's always right. different mm-hmm. but so i think that on the surface Kai just looks so normal. And behaves so together. So he's normally. a professional. Exactly. He's a businessman. And man. so you really don't, whenever these quirks come up, it's kind of just like, man, you're odd. And it's yeah. like, you never it's like he's really. Just, he's just a little bit odd. Mm-hmm. A little exactly. quirky. Mm-hmm. So you're not really thinking about what the other impacts are. Exactly. Of being diagnosed mm-hmm. with autism. So he says, Kai thinks to himself, if he couldn't grieve for Andy, that meant he couldn't grieve at all. And if he couldn't grieve, the flip side also had to be true. He couldn't love. So I'm just like, no, <laughs> no Kai, God. no. Don't use that Don't. logic. <laughs> no, you're wrong, baby. 
So present day in Ho Chi Minh, Vietnam, um, May is scrubbing toilets and witnesses <laughs> a woman crying in the bathroom and something's going on where she's working, basically. Mm -hmm. um, there's like some sort of interview going on. So whenever that woman leaves, another one, another older woman walks in who's clearly an overseas Vietnamese, mm -hmm. enters the bathroom and notices the way that May positioned like the tissue box. Mm -hmm. And I, looking back on the scene, reading back a second time, because she does do this whenever she gets to Kai's house, she positions it cat a corner mm -hmm. and Kai likes it parallel. Right. And I'm like, I wonder if Kai's mom saw that and be like, man, that would drive Kai crazy. Wait. Yeah. Someone needs to shake up his world. Right. I think that, I think that was It too. was like, because she asked, why did you position it like that? And mm -hmm. she was like, well, this is how we're told to do it. Mm -hmm. And so we discover a little bit um, about May. So May has a father who is an American businessman, and she never knew him. Mm -hmm. She's new to the city of Ho Chi Minh. She grew up poor, and she has a daughter. She's a single mm -hmm. mother, and she kind of followed in the footsteps of her own mother, right. getting pregnant young, and she's just trying to break the cycle. Yeah, she's she trying and her to mom and a grandmother all live together. All live together, with her exactly. So Kai's mom is in Vietnam to find him a wife on the sly <laughs> because mama knows best and she wants her boys to be happy. And That's she's right. convinced that Kai needs a woman. Yeah, she's like, Kai will never find one for himself. So mm -mm. I'm going like, to find one Like, I don't have to worry about Quan. Quan right. has Quan, girls all the Quan's time. Quan's got game. He's yeah, good. <laughs> exactly. So she tells May that Kai is convinced he doesn't want a family. And she thinks that he just needs someone more stubborn than him. Mm -hmm. She's like, he just needs somebody to show him the way. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? So she tests May by saying that she really wants grandchildren. And if May gets pregnant, regardless of how they feel about each other, that her son's going to do right by her. And she'll also offer her $20,000. May is like, no. And she immediately rejects the offer. Well, guess what? It was a test and she just passed because apparently the <laughs> other girls were accepting this offer. Right. Like, of They're course, we will trick your money. son into um, having a child with us and marrying right, us. Exactly. And so this was the right answer. She calls May later that night and says that she passed the test and that mm -hmm. she's offering to bring May to America for the summer and see how her and Kai would suit. Mm -hmm. May's mom's just like, you've got to do it. Yeah. Like, think of your daughter. Like, you've <laughs> right. got to do it. Just think. It doesn't just... hurt that the picture that she sees of Kai is like drop dead yes. gorgeous, She's like, like sexy, smexy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> I, I love how her mom's just like, that's him? Go. <laughs> yeah. No, the mom's like, get on a plane <laughs> now. <laughs> what are you Go doing? <laughs> He'll be perfect. And I'm, I mean, a lot of it's driven by her daughter. And she's right. like, her she's mom's like, I need to take this opportunity mm -hmm. exactly. you know and exactly which and is we, a completely understand right you, you'll do mothers will do and she has children. other pressure that the um father of her child is married mm -hmm. and he and his wife can't have children and offered to take her child and yes. she's like no no like know? i'm and going so, to provide for my yeah child. and so i think she feels that pressure that i need to provide as best i can completely agree right. so her mom gives her a picture before she leaves of her dad who is from california and he's wearing a Berkeley sweater. And May wants to try and find him while she's there. She And her mom's like, look, you know, there's a possibility his name was Phil. You know, mm -hmm. <laughs> which That's all me, I know. That's all I know. And to me, I'm like, how in the world could she possibly find him? You know? <laughs> It's a needle in a haystack. I know. I was like, just go to California and find a Phil <laughs> yeah. that went to Berkeley. Yeah. You know? Good luck. So um, so we know that's one of her goals when she's in America is right. to see what she can mm -hmm. find out yes. about not her only, past. It's not just Kai as a motivation. Right. There's right. also a possibility that she could find a father that she yeah. never knew. Which I really loved. Me too. I love that. So we get our first look into Kai as he returns from running. <laughs> <laughs> to find Quan at his house um, with the overgrown weeds everywhere. And his car is parked on the road instead of the garage, which is also a little That's odd all and a quirky. Whole thing. Yes, there's a whole a, thing. He also has this crazy 70s style shag carpet. And he's like, yeah, yeah his the, whole house is pretty outdated, but he so likes outdated. the way that the carpet feels. Yeah, he likes <laughs> the way the carpet feels. He always talks about it. He's like, sometimes the, the color is disgusting, but it feels so good on my toes, yeah. you know? Mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> um, Kai doesn't speak Vietnamese, but he can understand it when other people speak it. Yeah, because his mom all only, he only speaks, speaks Vietnamese, Vietnamese. So he on understands. purpose. Like right. she can speak English, but she only speaks right. Vietnamese. Right. And um, so his mom shows up and she tells Kai that he is picking up a girl named May from the airport, that Kai is going to pick up a girl. Yes. From the airport. Like, I need you to do this for me, son. Yeah. And that she's staying with him because she's his future wife. <laughs> <laughs> I love how 
before she walks in. Quan's Quan. like, get ready. He's like, get ready, get bruh. Ready. Like, <laughs> get ready. He's like, mom. You can't Seriously, do this. mom, you can't do this. <laughs> this, this is the 21st this, this century. Is the you can't do this kind of thing. But I love his mother so much. <laughs> and too. so Kai thinks when his mom says, says that, this is this had to be a joke, but he didn't understand the humor. I love like he's trying to figure out just like, how is this funny? What? How is this funny? I don't get it. Um, the, his mother has already booked a wedding venue for August 8th. Okay. She's already. <laughs> it's so funny. I couldn't believe it. I can't. Um, uh, and I she, need more scenes with his mom because oh I love her. Gosh, so much. she's so funny. And that was another one of my near showdown <laughs> scenes is one with her when they catch them kissing later oh yeah that was funny so um his mom tells him um she doesn't want him to be lonely okay and she's using that nifty trick that mothers have you know like i'm guilt tripping yes i'm thinking of you my son i need to care for you and you know he says or things lonely was for people who had feelings which he didn't it wasn't loneliness if it could be eradicated with work or a netflix marathon or a good book real loneliness would stick with you all the time real loneliness loneliness would hurt you nonstop. And so I find this very interesting that he has this perspective here, but when May comes into his life later on in the book and she's not around, he experiences it. Oh, absolutely. You know, he that he's he's void. always been experiencing these emotions, mm-hmm. but as we find out later on whenever he has these intense reactions with emotions mm-hmm. like whenever his dad left whenever Andy died and then whenever stuff happens with Esme later he experiences flu-like symptoms quote yes. unquote this is what he's oh describing gosh. it as but it's, it's actually so his grief his, his heart depression sick. exactly yes, he's heart sick. and so oh, he has been he is He's never not been able to feel yeah. emotions. He just processes them differently. Right. He just doesn't react in the same way as other people, but he still feels them. But he, it's just because his reaction is different that he feels like it's not there. But it right. is there. It's right. just he's not presenting in the way that is quote unquote normal, normal. which is bullshit. Right. right. You know, no. <laughs> We're There's not no normal. Go there. There's no normal. Yeah. And so for Kai, he's thinking he doesn't have these feelings or and that he can't have a romantic relationship. So this is kind of ridiculous. You know, um, yeah, he doesn't want he to doesn't disappoint, want to disappoint point. them, which is such I know. a point in his favor so he because he does have empathy for others. He is a com- <clears throat> he's not selfish at all. No. He allows this woman to stay at his house because he wants to be nice to his mom. His mom's mm-hmm. asking him nicely. He's like, I can't disappoint my mom. He has nothing but empathy for other exactly. people. Exactly. And, and, I and find that's why I love when she says when you, because when she says, if you tell him what you want or ask him, he will do it for you. Mm-hmm. Like he is so kind it hearted and it, it's mm-hmm. unbelievable. Yes. Um, but his idea that he doesn't want to hurt someone else because he can't love does remind me of Anthony Bridgerton. Which I love. You know, I'm like, they had the same issue. They had the same issue of just not wanting to start a relationship with somebody because they felt like they were unable to give them the same thing back. Right. Right. But of course, just as Anthony was wrong, so is Kai. <laughs> so is Kai. So is Kai. I know. And so, of course, he cannot deny his mother because Kai and Kwan are total mama's boys. Total mama's boys. And they it's give amazing. in to her. I love their family. I just want to be do. in their it's family. so fun. So, May has an Americanized name now, Esme, which, you know, there we go, fits. Mm-hmm. <laughs> she touches down in San Francisco and her anxiety is all too real Mm -hmm. i mean stepping into a foreign country this is not your native language i related to it on a lesser level whenever i was traveling in europe and i went to so many um airports in different countries and i'm the type of person i need like a plan i need to know where i'm going i get anxious i get anxious whenever i'm like i know i don't speak your language very well i could study that language so hard and be like so confident before i get there and then whenever i'm there i'm just like i'm gonna butcher this and so i feel like i can't say it yeah i can't even attempt it you know and everybody's like if you attempt the language they'll appreciate it but i'm always like i don't want to sound yeah. dumb. I had a similar experience too when I was 18. But one of my good friends, Carmen Martinez, she was a foreign exchange student at our school, but she went back home to Barquisimeto in Venezuela and invited me to come and spend a month with her and her family. And so, hell yes, I'm going to go to Venezuela for a month, right? Yeah, exactly. No brainer. So, you know, I get on the plane. I'm just such a little free spirit. We, I know no Spanish. I took French in high school. <laughs> <laughs> and so, yeah, so when we touched down, I didn't know where to go. And 
I just started following people and then I started getting nervous because I didn't see them. Mm -hmm. And apparently you had to go through customs and then on the other side of customs was like this big giant window. So I'm just following people through customs and I'm really starting to panic at this point because I'm like, these are before cell phones, y'all. That's how old I am. Yeah, that would honestly I had no phone to call anybody, but I hear them banging on the like glass and waving at me. I was like, oh, thank God. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. Relief. And so so I could empathize with her to a lesser extent because I know that it's nowhere near what she was saying. Experiencing. <laughs> right. At least we knew we were we there. We knew with somebody other was there people. to keep that we knew exactly. and cared about. She is being dropped off and has no idea. Doesn't even know these people. No, not you at know? all. Yeah. So I really did like this line. She thinks, um, Esme thinks she should be excited, but all she felt was scared. Home, however, wasn't an option right now. She had to do this for her girl. And I'm just like, oh, her yes. just determination, what she's willing to go through to possibly get a better life for her child, for mm-hmm. her mother and grandmother. Absolutely. I mean, it's that was just, great motivation. Oh my God. I love it. <laughs> just so her mother's advice, her mother has some very interesting advice. She says, <laughs> seduce first love will come. <laughs> so her new look, she has a new look. It's <laughs> very sophisticated. Mm-hmm. She's wearing these heels. She's wearing this beautiful form outfit. Fitting dress. Yes, form fitting dress. She's wearing red lipstick, and it's almost like she's in character. She's adopted mm-hmm. this. She's adopted this character, Esme, mm-hmm. the one that is Americanized and confident, and just not uh, what she's yes, used what she to. thinks would be very attractive to exactly. Kai. And I think that that the whole point is this is what she thinks that he wants. Like this is what. She'll be, he'll be expecting somebody sophisticated right, exactly. and worldly and mm-hmm. knowledgeable. Kai's reaction to her is, holy fuck, she was some kind of walking sex fantasy. <laughs> Literally, quote, word for word. Kai is immediately floored, impressed. He's like, holy, uh, no, she's going to kill me. <laughs> he remembers the rules, though, that his sister told him oh for gosh, dating, which rules. included not ogling a girl's Asset. So he has to quickly look away from Esme's boobalicious boobs. Yeah, I believe it's number six. Yeah. It's number six, number six. Yeah, number he six. keeps repeating it to himself, which I thought, what a gentleman. He's, mm-hmm. you know, remembering his etiquette, even though and it's I very hard. And I love that his sister taught him rules, Me knowing too. he needed the etiquette. Me you too. Know? So Esme talks to Kai in Vietnamese, and he answers in English. And this is how they will continue to talk to one another. Even whenever mm-hmm. Esme eventually talks to other people in English, she always reverts to Vietnamese and uh, whenever she's talking to Kai. Mm-hmm. And this is very important because Kai actually wondered why. Why won't she talk to him in English? And it's because she feels so comfortable being more herself with Kai. Yes. And that's a distinction. You mm-hmm. know, she doesn't have to try. He, he, She's just her. Right. Eventually. She yes. doesn't have to be I this love that persona too. that Esme thinks that she has to put on in front of him. Mm-hmm. So his inner turmoil at trying not to think about sex with Esme is just hilarious. <laughs> I mean, it's... Like I said, the humor is on point with this book. Mm-hmm. So whenever she is leveling with Kai in the car and she's like, I know that you don't want to marry me. And he's like, yeah, you're correct. And she <laughs> says, well, what's the perfect woman in your mind? And he says, she leaves me alone. Like that's his perfect woman. <laughs> the perfect woman. And she immediately says, you don't want that. I'll help you be happy. You'll see. <laughs> <laughs> and I like that she just, she doesn't let him push her away immediately yeah. like she immediately is just like no we're, we're, we're gonna do something we're gonna else try like, something else i hear you but no yeah <laughs> but also you, but no i hear you but you're wrong <laughs> <laughs> okay um yeah so i i really like that she doesn't like kai's oddballness phase her most yeah. of the time she's just like oh he's odd but and she's a little just quirky it too in. she just, is quirky yeah. And she yeah she she really takes a steamroll approach with kai which i think is necessary because Absolutely. he's so confident so sure about what he wants that he's never thought about trying anything else mm-hmm. and i think that this is important I agree. so she asks him if he is a spire assassin because he's wearing like these black suits <laughs> yes it's so cute okay you a ninja and he says he's an accounting major but a tax specialist so she lies and says that she's an accountant too yeah because oh. she thinks she she's like this is esme who's an accountant like this yes. is how this is she the role thinks of herself, to play. a role that mm-hmm. she's trying to put on she doesn't talk about her family in vietnam she's just trying to be what he wants mm-hmm. what he what she thinks he wants 
So she observes that Kai is odd, but she mm-hmm. says odd is good. Odd is an opportunity. Besides, she was odd too, just not as odd mm-hmm. as he was. Yeah, <laughs> just not as odd as him. But. Like, I'm odd too. It's fine. We can yeah. mash oddness together, yes. you know? <laughs> so she offers to clean his jungle-like yard, and he says that he likes it that way because of his annoying neighbor. <laughs> right, we- he has to win it. I mean, you should ask <laughs> nice lady, okay? <sighs> So he gives her a cell phone, which she's floored about. I know. And a room with a couch. And she loves this like old peeling nursery wallpaper because yes. she's like Jade, which is makes, her daughter's her Americanized daughter. name. Yes. Like, oh God, I just, everything was hitting me in the feels. Me too. And this, like this couch, because he's like, all I have is a couch in the spare bedroom. Because Kai's not one to just have people over. is mm-hmm. more than she's ever had. And I'm just like dead i know <laughs> like, i know SPF, I like you. she said the couch was nicer than the floor she slept on yeah, at home with never her had. mom and, yeah exactly so oh, goodness oh, gracious kills me yeah it was and so so she starts observing kai and uh, gets to know him a little bit better and i really like this she said he was strange and tactless and very possibly an assassin but when she looked at his actions all she saw was kindness his mom was right Kai was good stuff. Very, very good stuff. Yes. I like how she recognizes that right off the bat. Yes. Like she knows this is a good man. She knows the difference between, you know, she may not be worldly and all these other ways, but Mm -hmm. she knew a good man when she saw him. And Kai was definitely one of these. So Esme's mom suggests pretending like the couch is broken. So she has to sleep with guys. She's like, can you break the leg? Can you break (laughs) something? She's like, no, that's wrong, mom. She's like, no, mom, that's wrong. (laughs) She's like, what's wrong with you? Why aren't you sleeping with him yet? (laughs) It was so funny. So the next morning, um, Kai is awoken (laughs) by May, Esme, uh, wrapped in a towel and drenching wet. And the shower has malfunctioned. And so... Because it's it's a super fancy disco like yeah, it's, it's very extra. It it's is very, very extra. extra. <laughs> that is the best way to describe this shower. Because I was trying to imagine it in this like shag carpeted yeah. house, you know, outdated house with this crazy disco lighting in the shower. Anyway. Kai shows her all the right buttons to press, but meanwhile, he is getting extremely like uncomfortably attracted to he's her getting while hard. She's, yes. he's getting hard <laughs> while she's like looking at her in this like freaking towel and stuff <laughs> so that's when he goes to try to work and out and I love it, it how she's so scene. jovial and she's joking with him like she's just like oh look how efficient we are we're yes, cleaning look, ourselves we're and washing the towel yes <laughs> Yes, we're so good. It but that's when I was like, oh, she's me. a little odd bird herself. And he just stares at her, but she just like, I'm just going to keep hitting him with my jokes. <laughs> yes. Oh, my gosh. And so that's when uh, we have this whole moment. <laughs> my showdown where he's, scene. Yeah, it's a showdown where he's watching her. distracted by her. He's, she's hacking down um, trees in the backyard with her cleaver and her um, T-shirt and no bra. And her just, assets just tempting him like no other. Yes. He called it landscaper pornography, which I thought was freaking he hilarious. It's like, maybe I should go help her. Maybe the, not. Or <laughs> maybe not. Focus. Yeah. Mind over penis. Mind over penis. Mind over penis. So Esme is convinced that Kai is perfect for her. And, and Jade, because he is so kind, you know. I know. He covered her with a blanket that night. Yeah. She, 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 when she couch. woke up. She it's said, just something that he didn't need to do, but he did right, it anyway. And right. it's just little bitty He's signs. He's caring little, for her. And yes, she's noticing all actions, these little things. The actions right. are speaking very loudly. Yes. Even though he's, I don't need a woman. You yeah. Know, and all that. Whatever, business. guy. We, okay, we know guy. better. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> So Esme is invading his dreams and his house. I yeah. love that he starts to have dreams. Oh, <laughs> seriously <does> erotic <laughs> dreams. <laughs> and the uh, the problem is though is he can't jack off because she's in the house. Yeah. Like he usually takes care of this business himself. He's part of his daily scheduled. routine. It's scheduled. Oh, yes, it's, it's in his routine. Mm-hmm. But since she's been there, he's like, I can't do it when she's like right there in the next room, yeah. and he just he can't no do relief. it. No relief. So now, so basically, yeah. he has blue balls. <laughs> yes, serious blue balls, and she's just all up in his space, you know, being all attractive and all that. Absolutely. Rearranging things. Yes. And, oh, I love that she's cooking smelly things like that. Yeah. You smell like fish sauce or something. But I can't you remember know, what it was. also it's so, he never tells her to stop doing no. those things. He He's never like, says, don't touch my stuff. No. He never He just opens the door to ventilate boundaries. a little bit. And he lets her do her thing. Even though it is clearly bothering mm-hmm. him, he sits down and eats whatever she cooks but for see, him. But see, this is the thing. It's like you said, he's adjusting his life to her. Just mm-hmm. like when his mom saw that tissue box, she's like, he needs somebody to shake up his life. Right, exactly. And she's the one to do it, and he's allowing it mm-hmm. and adjusting, just like his yes. mom probably thought he would, you mm-hmm. know? He is a people pleaser. Definitely. 
So uh, Kai drops her off at his mom's restaurant. That's where she's going to work right now as a waitress. Okay. And we see that she struggles a lot because she doesn't know the language. Um, you know, she speaks in accented English. She doesn't want to sound like a foreigner. Like right. she knows English, but she doesn't want to use English and she, because she doesn't want to sound like a foreigner. Right. Which and, and I, totally and I that. hate that. Um, and some people are even like, she can feel them mocking her oh, absolutely. behind her back. I mean, and it just really so irritating. Awful. Anyway, so Kai's mom gives Esme a tip on how to deal with Kai. She says he's really smart. So people think he's complicated, but in truth, he's simple. If you want something from him, all you have to do is tell him. Yes. And so she, she learns this quickly. And after a week, <laughs> Kai is very annoyed with how his world has been thrown out of order. And on top of that, his sexual frustration oh, is yeah. causing him. He's mm-hmm. really, really having it hard. Yeah. Pun intended. He's just like, okay. this week has been a very long week. <laughs> it's been a very hard week. Okay. And so. he's like <laughs> thinking of ways like maybe he should be done with it and send her back home. Like this yes. is not working. And then he's like, and he's like, well, no, I know. He's like, no, just, I can make it till August 8th. I can make it to August. Well, she 8th. has a nightmare, which causes him to be like, Oh, right. Never mind. <laughs> right. So she does have a nightmare. Um, and the nightmare is about the father of her daughter taking her, away Esme, which of course she doesn't tell him what this is, but because of the nightmare, Kai lets her sleep in his bed. Mm -hmm. And so suddenly he starts to get comfortable with this routine of her sleeping in his bed. Right, exactly. You know. But um, I, I mean, like, I love how one minute he's thinking of sending maybe her away. she needs to go away because mm-hmm. I want my orderly life back. And the next he's letting her sleep in his bed because he says that he doesn't like to see her sad because yes. he's, she's always happy. And she's he's like, I can't happy. take he's her like, being exactly. sad. Exactly. He's like, I can't and I'm just, take your tears. And it's just like. I just want to hug him because <gasps> I'm just like, Kai, you're already falling. My I guy. Know, I know. And falling. he doesn't even know it. He's no. so clueless. Like Poor baby. utterly clueless. Poor baby. <laughs> Off to bed. <laughs> so um, he has his sis, his cousin Sarah's wedding. Oh, yeah. This is the summer of weddings in yes, Kai's family. <laughs> it is. And even the mom's like, take her to the weddings. Have fun, you know. And exactly. so she dresses up. She looks beautiful. They go to the wedding. But he the whole time, he's like, something's missing. Something's missing here at Sarah's wedding. And he realizes it's Andy. Unfortunately, because Kai is very honest, he mentions this to Sarah, the bride, right. who is An- Andy's sister. Yeah, it's a genuine, genuine. observation yes. that Andy should it's be like, here. You know, he's like, Andy should be here. And then Sarah just runs off bawling, crying. The groom's even looks at him like, what are you thinking, dude, for exactly. saying that? And he immediately realizes that was like, because he doesn't this realize faux his pas, social but faux he doesn't pas. understand he does not get. why it's not okay exactly. to mention Andy in this way. He doesn't understand it until people start crying. And then he realizes, oh, I did something wrong. Yeah, so his you know? solution is, let me remove myself and go and read yes. a book somewhere. So he goes to read a book somewhere. He's like, look, I'm going to... Bye. Yeah, I'm going to vacate because obviously I don't know... I don't want to upset anybody. Mm-hmm. I just need to disappear. Right. And he hates weddings anyway because he doesn't know how to act. Yeah. You know, he hates mm-hmm. them. So Esme goes looking for him and ends up in the bridal changing area where she sees the wedding dress. Like, oh, yeah. Vera a Wang. A Vera Wang. $10,000 beautiful dress. And um, she's like, oh, I just want to try it on. Mm-hmm. Okay. So I she- really <laughs> love how she decides to take off her clothes and Esme never wears a bra. Never. So she's only in panties. <laughs> yes. She takes off her clothes. She's in panties. And then she can't can't get the dress down and then she hears footsteps someone yeah. coming so she jumps in the closet mm-hmm. well it's it's kai mm-hmm. and he sits down and reads a book well then she starts hearing some other people coming a couple coming in yeah y'all, and kai to have hears sex. it too and so kai jumps up to hide and jumps in the closet with her and there's and esme sitting naked there esme. naked except for her little panties with a squished little into, pink bow yeah, or whatever squished into a closet <laughs> and they have to listen to guys cousin get it on out having there. sex with uh one wait, of the guests wait i have to mention this the woman says wowie wowie and then they both look at each other wowie guys <laughs> i can't i was, that was uh, the funniest thing that should have been one of our showdown series I can't. it was There's so too good many There's too many. it's so good i'm telling you Helen Huang is on top of her game. There's just too many good parts of oh, this book. Oh, yes. Too many. Yes. So the next morning, Esme isn't there in his bed. And he checks her room to make sure that she hasn't left America altogether. Yeah. yeah all <laughs> of a like, sudden, he's like. He's so relieved to see her yes. stuff there. And he's thinking to himself, he doesn't want to get used to Esme. But mm-hmm. that's clearly what's happening. I mean, it really is. He's She's becoming a part her. of his routine. Yes. He, mm-hmm. she is, uh, he has a new routine and it yes. includes Esme. Yes, I he's love it. He's getting used to all of her quirkiness. Mm-hmm. Well, he realizes that she's not in the house at all. 
and that the only possible solution because his car is out there and he decides he's going to check the garage. Well, this motorcycle is not there. The motorcycle yes, is the important garage door's because open. that was Andy's motorcycle yes, that he got in a wreck on and, yeah. and he died. So he freaks out because the correlation between the motorcycle is death. Right. So he's like, Esme is going to die. Right. So he oh. tears out of there. Esme just was going to the Asian grocery store to go get some stuff. Like, yeah. she just didn't want to be a burden. She's like, I, She's can, like, do I can do for this myself. for myself. Exactly. I'm an I can woman. do a motorcycle. I can take care of this. Top notch. And, which, by the way, I thought was pretty badass. Bad Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely badass. Just hops on a motorcycle in a and foreign go. city. Yo, and I've goes driven a motorcycle crazy. in college. It was hard. Yeah. So he <laughs> catches her on the freeway and makes her get in his car so she won't die. Like mm-hmm. he is in full panic mode. Yeah. He, and she doesn't understand it. But it is his trauma that he's never really dealt with with Andy because like he he thinks he has no emotion, but he has so many emotions and he's not dealt with them. And so mm-hmm. this is the problem. This is why obviously, you know, it the motorcycle is still there taking up room in the garage to the mm-hmm. point where he will not even park his car in there because right. the motorcycle takes up prominent space in the garage. It's stuff that he needs to deal with and he yes. hasn't dealt with yes. yet. It's like, it's literally like a skeleton in the closet. Right. But it's in the garage. Exactly. And it's just walled up. So this is just too much. So Kai snaps and says that everything that she's been doing, everything has to stop. And he yes. calls her like this ridiculous stuff that you've been doing. She goes look that up in the dictionary she's like, later. Ridiculous. And she's what like, is you this know what? Word? Fine. She's like, Ugh. fine. Whenever she figures out the meaning of that. Mm-hmm. So Esme decides to take up this Miss Q, who has been in the restaurant a couple times. Yes. Kind of helped her out whenever she's mm-hmm. having a difficult day at work. Miss Q um, offered her to attend uh, this English school for adults. Um, right. Which is like right across from it's the It's right um, across from the restaurant. restaurant. And she's like, anytime you want, it's not that. So she's like, I'm going to take her up on her offer because, and she's like, this, the fee's affordable and I have time because right. I'm only here to she's like, Let me make hang the out with of it Kai. And here. now he doesn't want to hang out with me. So now I'm going to yes. go to this adult school, get better at English. And she wants to learn accounting, which I thought this was beautiful. Like she so said, cute. she lied to Kai, but guess what? She's going to learn it anyway. Yeah. <laughs> so for the next two weeks, Esme has stopped all the disturbances at Kai's house. She still sleeps in the bed with him, but like at the very end. Yeah, like and he all notices. the way at the edge. Oh, yeah. And so Kai's thinking his evenings now sucked. The house felt empty <laughs> and he couldn't even focus on work. Yeah, because she's not there anymore yeah, the, in the evening. Not there. So one night Esme calls him to let him know that she's at the clinic. The phone call is really funny though. Oh, yeah. I can't reenact it, but it's amazing. <laughs> and so she slipped at the stairs at school. That's what happened, but she didn't tell Kai that. Yeah. Kai doesn't even know that she's going to this night classes. Right. And he hasn't asked either. No. And so Kai rushes over, like immediately, yeah, like, like no, where I'm are coming, you at? I'm coming. So Esme asks if Kai, like whenever they're they're in the um getting her foot all doctored up, it's mm-hmm. fine. And Kai asks where she's been, like what have you been doing? There's no stairs at the restaurant. I know. She evades. And so yeah. Esme decides to ask Kai for help to look for her dad. So here's the yeah. other part of the equation. Yeah. And she gives him the information that she has, this picture, and that he went to Berkeley. And the only name that she has is Phil. And so he agrees to take yeah, her to Berkeley. I love, like, he's I have so time. eager I'll to help do it. Her. Like, yes. definitely, I will take you yes. there. So he's falling so hard for Esme. Mm-hmm. He, whenever they're on the college uh, campus, he even says, like, his favorite color is now a specific shade of seafoam green, yes. a.k.a. her eyes, like, exactly. in the sunlight. Her dad's it's just, eyes. it's amazing. <laughs> so, but he it's still nice. is convinced that he could never give Esme what she needs. Right. Which and is I'm, love. Oh, poor baby. I mean, mm-hmm. he parks in a no parking zone, gets a parking ticket so that she doesn't have to walk very far. I know. Far. And she I recognizes mean, that, she too. So while at Berkeley, they're trying to narrow down candidates, which is very hard for her father. And they run into one of Esme's classmates yes. from the adult school. Angelica, mm-hmm. the And Russian Esme girl. confesses later, after some prodding, that she is not an accountant at <laughs> all. But she is learning accounting. Yes. And he tells her, you never needed to lie to me. Yeah. And I just like that it wasn't a big deal. Me like, too. oh, you did, you did yeah, lie to exactly. me. But I never just expected like, Kai would Me neither. Would He's react. not that type of person. But no. just like in general, He's as just like confused, go, like conflicts. Why, yeah, exactly. Yeah, why would you do that? But it, it, it was just like there and gone. Exactly. So he offers. He's like, well, how about I pick you up from night class? Because she's been I taking the bus. Part. And mm-hmm. I'll pick you up. You don't have to take the bus anymore. <laughs> so it's like, okay, reincorporate 
Esme into my routine again. Exactly. It's like, come back. Yeah. <laughs> and also, it's a very caring thing to do. Like, it is. I want to make sure you get there safely mm-hmm. and get home safely. Exactly. So, at the next wedding, another cousin, <laughs> Esme is in- introduced to Quan, who is Quan. charming and has her laughing in no time, as Kai oh observes. Oh, gosh. Kai is so jealous. He is so jealous. But he chants <laughs> it down because he's telling himself that <sighs> Quan is actually the type of person that she should be with. I know. He, he was like, at the Look same how time, easily. he's just. Look he, how easily he's making her laugh. It's I just, know. but he's so jealous. He's so angry, and he doesn't even know why he's so angry. He's mm-hmm. like, "Why am I so angry? Yeah. Why am I like?" He's like trying to figure out what's going yeah. on. It's mm-hmm. like, "Hi, <laughs> oh boo, you're I know, a goner." It's so bad. But Esme, she doesn't want Quan. She likes hanging out with Quan, but yes. she feels like Kai's pushing her away because she's like, "Dance with me," and he's like, "No, go dance with Quan." Yes. Stuff like that, and. He, she's about to cry because I mean she's trying to be as honest as possible without just like completely laying everything yeah, out exactly. there and she's about to cry and he kisses her mm-hmm. and I'm like yes and it's boom instant combustibility and they're caught by his mom and the aunt. <laughs> I love this scene his so His mom's much. excited. <laughs> they're all like coming down the stairs or whatever. His mom's like this boy. <laughs> oh, yeah. And the aunties. They're so funny. I just cracked up. She's like, why don't y'all go home? Why don't y'all go home? (laughs) So they race home to have sex. But it's Kai's first time, which he does not tell Esme. And he finishes, and she doesn't. Yeah. And he immediately hops in to take a shower. (laughs) This is from Esme's point of view. She says he was always leaving her because she wasn't what he wanted. She'd known this, but she'd thrown herself at him anyway. And my heart freaking broke because oh I'm just like gosh. this poor girl yes. she's, she's the one that always has to make these first moves and she's yes. putting it all on the line and you're right he's giving and her he's still s- signals no no signals but it's like but Kai doesn't understand he went to take a shower because it's like I was sticky and sweaty and I didn't yeah, want to get her all done. grossed out it's done and we finished and mm-hmm. he doesn't know there's a clitoris or where it's at no, poor so baby. come on poor Kai poor Kai so, so Esme's now giving him the cold shoulder yeah. and sleeps in her room now she's like the couch is fine. <laughs> I know. Poor he's thing. And he like, just what? does not understand so what's he's, going he's on. Like, Quan, he's so confused. Quan helped. He arrives at Quan's apartment and <laughs> Quan asks him to break down what happened to get to the root of the problem. Yeah. And the problem is Esme did not orgasm and Kai did not cuddle. And he's like, girls don't like that shit, bro. Go, yeah. Girls don't like it. Yeah. So they call Michael for his input and Michael's like lots of foreplay, which we talked about in the kiss quotient. Michael is good yes. at foreplay. <laughs> and the little location of the clitoris which kai does think it's an urban myth <laughs> it sounds like one anyway and then kwan helpfully gives him the sex for dummies book which is the perfect move to give kai an instruction manual because i'm yeah. like this is exactly what he needs like yeah. he does well with instructions like give right. him a breakdown give him some diagrams he's good to go right so he goes back and tries again, which I love it. He yes. gets right back on the horse. He's like, I all right, know. let's fix it. So Kai apologizes to Esme, and I love that he brings all these Vietnamese fruits because his mom he had did that. Fruits. In he hates fruit, by the he way. He does not like he them. He hates it. But, but his Esme mom had them. bought a bunch of Vietnamese fruit when she first got there, and it was all gone. So he just went out and bought all this fruit. That's like part of his <laughs> apology to her. Mm-hmm. Like to show that he cares. Yeah, to show observes. that he cares. And explains, and then he tells her, he confesses, it was my first time. Yes. And first to first, of course, she's like, doesn't believe it. But then she realizes he's telling her the truth. And um, he wants her to give him another chance. And he's truly, truly regretful of how it all happened. But she asks, well, you know, what will you do? Yeah, like you what's, what's going to be different? What it will be different. <laughs> I love how she does not give yes. in right away. And she she's just like, kind of like makes him take yeah. some steps toward her. So how is this going to be any like different? you make your play. Yeah. And I'm he like, says, there's going to be more kissing and mm-hmm. more touching. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and then I love it. It was awesome. She's like, okay. And then he said, but there's one place you can't touch me. And, and he's like, she's like, okay. And she's thinking some strange, obscure place. His belly, belly button. It's his belly button. He doesn't like it. He doesn't. He's like, no, seriously, I might get violent if you touch my belly <laughs> Which button. Which I thought this was hilarious. <laughs> was I have so a friend who she particularly does not like anybody to touch her knees. Like, I'm yeah. serious. She has such an averse reaction mm-hmm. to somebody touching her knees. It's funny oh my god i I'm accidentally about my belly button i actually so i weird. accidentally touched her knee and she was like, <laughs> I was like oh my god okay instant reaction <laughs> but i love when they start to get together again he says please don't let me make you cry if something is wrong tell me so i can fix it please no. he's like begging her he oh, is god. 
He's so he in just, love with her. Oh God. He's so I in just, love. Yeah. I yeah. mean, yeah. So, what else is there to say besides you're a goner Kai? Yeah. You don't well, even know. Let's say that, that Kai is a quick study because all of his reading he did in the car before Damn, he came home. Getting that job done. Gets it done. Getting it done. And Esme's like, oh yeah. Very but now, pleased. very pleased now. Yeah, he's very pleased. But Kai is also worried that he's going to be addicted to Esme and contemplates getting rid of her again. You know, he always goes back to this. I love he's like, how it's like such a fleeting thought, though, because yeah. as soon as she like moves and like stirs, and he was like, oh, yeah, okay, it makes wait, wait, sense. No, Esme, okay, okay. I'm, I'm addicted to Esme. That's it. <laughs> Case closed. I know. Okay, that's it. <laughs> so for the next month, Esme attends school to become Esme in accounting. Which her is her, I love I how I love it she was, was her persona, but yes. now she's actually becoming it, yes. but in her own way. Like right. she's not trying to dress up like her but she's like she's I am becoming going her own to person become and she's she's becoming educated and taking this class I think mm-hmm. it's great self-made woman um, her waitressing job is getting easier um, and she and Kai have learned each other's ways um, not you know, just sexually baby not just sexually yeah, they're they, very they're just, compatible and just yeah, she learned how to vent whenever she's cooking the soups with the fish sauce yes, that smells terrible yes. I mean they just they're integrating into each other's lives in very such easily. a way that I'm and so for me, inevitable for me, I kept thinking, okay, Kai doesn't know about her daughter, you know? Yes. And so it's like, so there's still this, like this lingering yeah, bomb still that's waiting things. to be dropped. There's still <laughs> things that need to happen. Right. Um, Kai's mom asked them about the wedding and their upcoming reservation for August 8th. Yeah, she's got that wedding. Ticket, man. Waiting, you know, we and, talk about this. and neither one of them are like, you know, we, we need to talk about it. We're yeah. not, you know, we don't know, you know? But in the midst of all that, they're interrupted by a call from one of the men who could be Esme's father. Yeah. Okay. Phil something. There were so many Phil's. <laughs> I know. There were a lot of Phil's. They found some Phil's. But uh, I love that uh, it was one of Quan's friends, I think, that helped them out. Yeah. And, it was like an yeah. algorithm that he had. Those yes. like very tech All stuff. these super brainy guys. I love in them. the family. I mean, hot. So, I know. Extremely. Something Esme says about finding her dad clicks with Kai. He's, he'll, she says, he'll say, all I want is a green card and his money. It is true. I want a different life, but. Which I think that this is an important distinction for Esme. She doesn't want to connect with her dad for reasons which some people might think she does. Right. To stay in America and stuff. She really just, she wants, she wants these humans know. connections. Like she's doing stuff on her own. Right. She's going to school she's doing fine by herself she's she's self betterment is like her middle name Mm -hmm. and she doesn't need to ride the coattails of anybody else to do it but but she also wants to know who her father is too yeah exactly but kai interprets it as oh this is how i can help her she wants a different life i can give her a different life i can help her solution to the marriage problem right i will marry her but it'll only be for three years. That exactly. way I get to keep her for I can a little keep her while. For three years. But there's three no years love bliss. expected. Like we can lay out the details like we're getting married for your green card. But I love the way he even in, when he talks himself through it in his head, he's like, For three years I'll have like this this utter bliss, you know, basically. Oh, no. He's doing it. This is like a selfish reason. Yes. He wants to keep but her. But he knows at the end of three years it'll be gutting. But, but it's at the same an time, excuse, yes, though. It's an excuse. It's an excuse. It's a He's total been excuse. looking for reasons to keep Esme without yeah. marrying her. Like, without committing to her to a true relationship because he thinks he cannot give that to her and he doesn't want to hurt her. This is an important distinction. Right. He thinks that he cannot reciprocate and he does not want to put her through that. Right. But this is an excuse. He's like, oh, perfect well, I solution. Can definitely I can get her the green her. card. Yeah, right. I can keep her and have all the things that I want, but we can disguise it as right. It won't be a real really, it won't stuff. be a real marriage. Exactly. It won't, there will be no love needed. Right. And as long as It'll we lay the, the details all out, no feelings will be hurt. Exactly. So Kai's mom gives them a, an ultimatum. She's like, I want, to, um, I need to know what your answer is after Michael and Stella's wedding. Mm-hmm. Okay. Like at, we'll talk after. Mm-hmm. Okay. It's like, okay. And so they're like, okay, we'll, we'll figure We'll talk. They still haven't had like talk, talk. Esme confesses to Kai that she had her reasons for coming to America for Kai. But now that she's gotten to know him, she is, happy and she loves him i know (laughs) and he he is like over the moon hearing this but at the same time when she asks him do you love me he says i don't he's like why did she have to ask that question i know because he's like that's the one thing i can't give her he's like Mm -hmm. i don't i don't love you and i never will which gouged me in the heart yeah it did i was like wow talking about blunt 
just delivery. But he's like, but I'll still marry you, you know, and you can stay. Yeah, he runs but out his plan, his three-year plan. Esme runs away. She's but like, she's she in love with she him. Can't love you don't want to hear exactly. that shit. Exactly. She's in love with him. Exactly. She's like, I can't marry you, and I'm in love with you, and you'll never love me. Like, yeah, no. Please, I have no. some respect for myself. Bullshit. Yeah. <laughs> I know. Yeah, so I she love runs it. Away. Yeah, she runs away. She runs and away Kai from the wedding. Kai cannot find her. Kai can't he's find frantic. her. And Quan Quan basically calls him out on it. It's like, yeah, Dude. he's like, he's like, you told her you didn't love her, but it's complete, it's bullshit. complete bullshit. You can like, definitely see that you're so in love. You're with totally her. in love with her. So after Esme's been missing and Kai's been looking for her, mm-hmm. Esme had stayed in a hotel, and Kai finds her at the restaurant the next morning and he just looks just shattered and like unkempt just not himself not his put together yeah. self yeah and he doesn't see why esme wants to move out because he just like no stay with me like he wants her in his life so yeah. bad but when she asks him again if he loves her he still says no <laughs> and so she's sticking to her guns and she says okay goodbye then and kai's mom witnesses <sighs> this and she just like i don't understand i don't understand why he's saying this these things he's so stubborn and his mom is just wonderful she loves to call esme her precious, her precious girl, girl and she says so you'll sweet. always be my precious girl yes i just love Kai's mom so much. I did you. So Quan checks on Kai, who is feeling poorly and is convinced that it's the flu. <laughs> Quan's like, has that fever coming along? Yeah. Like, no fever. <laughs> like, dude, you're so lovesick. So Quan says this behavior is exactly what's happened after their dad left and Andy died. Yep. And this is Kai being sad. He's like, this bro, mourning, you're sad. Like, grief. I can't even move the cup on the counter. The water is almost evaporated <gasps> because yes. that was her cup. Because that like, was her glass he's of like, water. Do you know how sicking- sickeningly sweet that that is you're so in love <laughs> you're so in love you don't even know it he's so, like don't touch my cup yeah it's funny poor kai being sad is just <laughs> that uh, part just killed me, me it was too. so beautiful because kai couldn't figure out why he had no, this he's, flu he's so convinced that he's yes. just sick yes and he's heart sick <laughs> so after esme passes her ged exam because the girl has been getting it yeah she has not I been love brought just, low she is yeah going after it Mm -hmm. she discovers that getting a student visa is a possibility and so she decides to try for one with the help of miss q Mm -hmm. kai tries to practice just saying i love you in his mirror (laughs) he can't do it (laughs) he's having such trouble but he's trying it shows you his where his true feelings lie because he is really trying so kwan tries to get him to see beyond this false idea that he can't experience emotion or love Mm -hmm. he's like trying to explain like will you do this for me would you do this would you do this for her yeah like okay well this is brotherly love and this it shows how much you care about her this is love like he tries to talk i love kwan explaining this kwan Kwan does a brilliant job he's awesome it it does eventually seek, sink into it Kai. Eventually. Yes. It takes a while. It takes but a while, it does. but it does. It like slowly but surely. Good job, Quan. <laughs> so um, Esme is rejected I for know, a student visa, sadly, but I like the way it all plays out in the end. So don't worry. It plays out well. <laughs> and Quan says that in order to give Kai the kick in the rear end that he so obviously needs, he will say that he is marrying Esme. Esme asks, well, what happens when Kai doesn't try to stop the wedding mm-hmm. because she's being practical? Like, obviously, I mean, nothing's been happening these past weeks. Right. And Quan says that he will marry her anyway. Yes. To give her I a love visa. He's like, look. I'm you like, know, Quan stepping up to the plate. I he, love it. Ugh. And Esme's like, Throwing down all these obstacles for like, Quan. Right. And she says, I also have a daughter. Quan just like, fine. That's I, fine. Like, I Completely love kids. Completely fine. Kids are great. Uh, bring your mom. Bring them all. Grandma, bring them all. Bring them over. Bring them all I mean, they're on. used to large families, yeah. you know, and so Quan, I love that. I just... I can't wait for his book. I'm dying for it. I want it now. Kai <laughs> receives the wedding invitation e-bite because <laughs> <laughs> it's less than a week to August 8th. <laughs> That's He's so Kai offended Sarah. by this as well. <laughs> it's like, who sent <laughs> Who sent bite. this invitation the week of the wedding? Oh, there's a week away? Yeah. Oh, Kai gosh. tries to convince himself that it would be a good thing for Esme since she would probably fall in love with Quan eventually. But <laughs> the next <laughs> sentence is like him convincing himself that this just can't happen. Yes. So he, quote, this is a quote from Kai, and he says, he couldn't let her go and he couldn't marry her, but he couldn't let her marry Quan either. None of the available options were acceptable. That meant he had to find another option. He just, he needs her to stay. Yes. And he can't let anyone else have her. So it's the day of the wedding. 
And Kai hasn't called or tried to contact Esme. Yeah, she's a little sad. She right, she is sad. Disappointed, thinking, I can't believe he mm-hmm. didn't even try, you know? Yeah, nothing. Radio yeah. silence. Well, Kai, this is the day of the wedding. Mm-hmm. He gets on Andy's motorcycle. Yeah, because Kwan had sort of hinted at, he's like, yeah. you know that motorcycle's still sitting in the exactly. garage? You need to do something like, about that, deal too. deal with it. Yes. And he drives to where the accident happens, and he cries oh. he breaks and he finally understands that Quan was right and that he had been deluding himself for a while and his heart wasn't was made, it made of, of stone. stone yes killing oh my me gosh. killing me with the feels oh. and he finally says out loud i love her i love esme <laughs> and i'm just like yeah you Dying. do Dying. get on that motorcycle go get the girl <laughs> you better go get her go, go get the girl kai <laughs> i can see him in his me too <laughs> James Bond on a motorcycle. Just hell yeah. Black gear. Hell yeah. (laughs) So Esme's family was flown in for the wedding. Mm -hmm. And when it looks like she is about to have to marry Quan for real, a man appears. Mm -hmm. Not the man we're expecting though. Yes. But it's a good one. It's her dad. Her dad is here. Oh my goodness. And the whole story about her dad, first of all, he did not like his his first name. first name. So he gave a part of his last name right. to the mom. Right. And whenever he returned, they were no longer there. And the mom didn't have the full name. Yeah. And his real name is Gleaves Philander. Yeah. And I love that which, he What tra- a name. Gleaves Philander. <laughs> no wonder name. he was going by Phil. I don't blame you, Gleaves. <laughs> Not at all. That's the weirdest name. But I love that he says that he was so excited to see her. Yeah. And, and like, he was he, like, I live in New York alone. Alone. He's like, <gasps> I tried to go back. He tried to go back and find her and couldn't find she was already I need gone. An update. And can we have a novella heart. with Glee? Can we please have a novella with them? <laughs> yeah, oh I need. Gosh. I need to see them living in New York, New York together. I mean, is, is that the cutest? It really is. I really. I really. Ugh. This is a real thing. Helen Huang, if you're listening, like we're can, we, can we please have that? Like dead serious, <laughs> please. Even just like a five k. Yeah. You know, like just like. Five thousand words, just a little nibble. bit, a little just short, a little please. Okay. <laughs> anyway, so of course, this is when Kai appears, and he was the one to You're find. You're just like, you Esme's must be the dad. right Phil. <laughs> yeah, he's like, you must be, you must be your dad. And they're like, what? You know? And then all of a sudden, I loved, loved, loved the reaction of Kai when he sees Esme's daughter mm-hmm. Jade, and he's, he's like, "There's a tiny Esme." <laughs> So and I cute. love he just, he just squats like, down just and like, looks at her. Tiny Esme right yes. there. Who are you? Because she looks just like her. Oh, my gosh. And Kai finally tells Esme that he loves her in Vietnamese. Yes. Uh, m- and she, my heart just she like. She says, she's like, in her dreams. It yes. was never. It was always in English. It was but always it just means all the, mo- the more because he does not speak Vietnamese. Yes. He says, I love you. I mm-hmm. told myself I didn't because I was afraid to lose someone again. My heart works in a different way, but it's yours. You're my one. I want to cry right now. <laughs> <laughs> oh Why is he so romantic? <laughs> Kai. Oh, gosh. <sighs> he far surpassed the hero I had in mind. Yeah. That we meet. Like I said, I think I was having this impression of pretty much like almost like a, an alpha hole, you know what I'm saying? Like, I was just like, we're going to come at this, at this very cold exterior person. Yes. But we got this wonderful, Oh my gosh. Wonderfully emotional Kai. So beautiful. He's so full of emotion. He just doesn't even know it. No. You know, I I absolutely adored him. So our epilogue is four years later. And Esme, who goes by her Vietnamese name, May, except to Kai, um, who still calls her Esme, is graduating from from college with plans to go to graduate school. I absolutely love this. And she has like international interests. Like it's just like amazing. And then they're just a cute little family. But they're not married yet. Yeah, they're not married yet. Because she has, she had priorities. Yeah, she had school first, and and so she finally says she's ready to marry Kai. Yeah, they're going to go to Vegas with Elvis. Oh, God. So, 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 so good. (laughs) I was extremely satisfied by this book. I just felt, I was like, I was just like, yep, beautiful. Yeah, I know. Helen Huang, I'm convinced you can do no wrong. Five bazillion stars. I mean, you can try (laughs) to convince me otherwise, but you're just amazing. Uh, And when's Kwan's book? We're going to leave it at that. And who's Kwan's lady? (laughs) I don't I'm know, dying. but I trust her. Like, oh gosh, all his to, tattooed yumminess. I trust yumminess. her to surpa- surpass whatever I imagine mm-hmm. Helen Huang can do it better. <laughs> I 100% believe it too. Okay, guys, we just have a quick announcement. Just a reminder, we will be taking a two-week summer break at the beginning of June. Regular episodes will resume on the 19th, but we do plan to have some mini-sodes for you guys in between. Yep, so we'll we won't still, be we'll completely st- yeah, gone. Yeah, we'll be gone, gone. We'll be gone. We are still around. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> that leaving, leaving. We hope that you enjoyed today's episode and look forward to the next one where we'll be discussing When August Ends by Penelope Ward. Woo-hoo, so excited. Thanks so much for listening. This goes out to all the fangirls. Life's better with a little H-E-A. 